Merry Meet! In this lecture, I will be discussing altars and common tools used in pagan and Wiccan practices. First, let's start with altars. An altar can be anything with a flat surface. It is something that we have chosen for the specific purpose of doing magic. Almost anything can be used as an altar, be it a table or a windowsill or a cupboard or a bookshelf. As long as it has a flat surface, you're good. Now, there are different types of altars as well. We may have one central altar for our main magical workings. We can also have many different altars for specific magical workings. For instance, pictured here is my main altar. It was my great-grandmother's old sewing machine. And this is where I do my main magical workings. So spells and rituals that we're doing for specific purposes. This is where I would do it. Now in this image you can see the windowsill above my kitchen sink has some items on it. This is my healing altar. Every morning I'll light the candle there in the center and send out healing energy to those who need it. And here is my kitchen altar. It's a baker's rack and I use the bottom portion as my altar. When I'm preparing magical meals, I'll use this space to prepare. To anyone else, it just looks like part of the kitchen decor, but to me, I know what each item means. And here is my Sabbath altar. Currently, we're going into Ostera, so I have decorated it for the holiday. So, as you can see, to anyone else, it'll look like decoration, but to me, it has a purpose. Remember, an altar does not have to be a neon sign stating that it's pagan or Wiccan space. It does not have to be hidden at all, and people can look and touch items. If you ever feel that you need to re-consecrate your space, it's really easy to do. Altars can be movable as well. I know people who use a TV tray that they can move from place to place, indoors, outdoors. A lot of people live in small spaces where a large permanent altar is not possible, so having an altar that can be moved and stored easily is a better solution. Some people choose to practice outside, so an old tree stump or even a small outdoor patio table works well for that. It's all about what you choose to have. For many practitioners there are basic tools that most people choose to use. Altar cloth. This is used to cover your altar. This actually helps in protecting your altar from things such as burn marks, ashes, and candle wax. Choosing an altar cloth that is the right color or has symbols on it to help raise proper energy is always a plus. These can be bought, or you can use scarves or bandanas or even cloth squares. You can easily make them if you knit or crochet or make lace or quilt and sew. I've used placemats and pot holders and towels that had colors and symbols on them that meet the needs of my ritual. An altar tile is usually made out of natural items such as stone, wood, or metal and contains the symbol that represents your spiritual belief. This is many times rep a representation of the element of earth. A lot of people mistakenly call this a pentacle, where sometimes a pentacle is found on the altar tile, or an altar tile is in the shape of a pentacle. It doesn't have to be. An altar tile can have any shape or symbol that holds purpose to you. For instance, in this image, I have some different altar tiles that I've used. One is the shape of a pentacle made out of silver. Next, I have a soapstone altar tile that has the goddess symbol on it. And then a small one is a wooden tile that is painted with images of the triple goddess. An athame is a dull knife that is used to direct energy. It is usually associated with the element fire, as a blade is forged in fire. However, in some paths they associate it with the air element because of the swish that is made when you slice through air. The athame is also representative of the god. Some people like 
a small knife, others use a sword or even a staff for this purpose. The athame is not used to cut anything, though some people use the tip to carve candles. It is only used to direct energy and not to cut things. The bell is used many times to call or dismiss the elements or invite and thank the deities. It can also be used to symbolize the air elements. A besom is a ritual broom that is used to sweep out energy. A besom is simply a broom made out of herbs or twigs. This one here is a cinnamon besom that I bought at a craft store. It no longer has the fake scent of cinnamon that they put on it, but you can find these easy enough in the floral area of a crafting store, especially during the winter holidays. They are very popular then. Candles and candle holders are tools used most by witches. These may be used as a spell ingredient, and it usually is used to represent the element of fire as well as to represent the god and goddess. They are, after all, the light bringers of our lives. Candles come in all shapes and sizes. You can even get battery-operated candles these days, which is great if you're living in a dorm room and can't burn actual candles, or if you're traveling. When doing spells and rituals, depending on the needs of it, I like tea lights and chime candles. For things like my healing altar, I like jar candles. And also remember, white candles can replace any color because white is the reflection of all colors. Candle snuffers. As you should know by now, you should never blow out a candle. Not only does it damage the energy you're using, it is also a fire hazard. So always extinguish your candles with a candle snuffer. A cauldron is a, usually a small bowl that is fireproof. Some people choose to use it to burn incense. It can be used as a tool for divination. It can also be used to burn things in. The cauldron is usually representative of the goddess. The chalice is usually what is used to hold the water elemental. However, some choose to use a bowl instead of a chalice. Many paths also feel that the chalice represents the goddess. This is not the same thing as a goblet, which is used for holding wine for libations. I'll discuss that here in a moment. Some people choose to use a devotional bowl. The purpose of the devotional bowl is to place little bits of cake and ale in tribute of the deities. You can also place your ashes or spell work that you will be disposing after the ritual you are performing. Even things such as petitions or gifts to the deities or spirits can go in these. A dish or bowl is usually what we hold our earth element in. Many people choose to use salt or stones to represent the earth element. The goblet is what you would hold your ale for your cakes and ale. Cakes and ale can be anything you choose it to be. Usually we use food and drink that helps us uphold the purpose of the ritual we're performing. Using items that are sacred to the deities we are working with or energy that we are raising, it helps add another layer to the magic you are performing. The cakes and ale also help you ground after doing spell work. Having a special goblet that is used only for your magical workings is always a good idea. It could also be a glass or cup or mug or stein or whatever you want to use. The incense burner, for most people, is used for the air element. Incense is used to bring in specific energy depending on the type you use. You may choose to make your own with loose herbs or use stick or even cone incense. A libation dish is what you hold your cakes for your cakes and ale. Again, cakes and ale are whatever you choose them to be. They should represent the energy or the deities you are honoring. It is always nice to have a specific dish for your magical workings. It doesn't have to be a big platter. Simply a small dish or saucer will work for this. Quill, ink, and parchment. Though you can use a pen 
or pencil or any other writing utensil, a quill and magical ink always adds a bit of oomph to your magical workings. Choosing a quill that is the right color and the type of magical ink can be a great boost and add another layer to your magic. Parchment paper is simply paper, though actual parchment paper tends to be a little thicker than regular notebook paper. The ink that is traditionally used is sometimes referred to as blood. The most common of these inks are dragon's blood, dove's blood, and bat's blood. Of course, there is no actual blood used in these inks. It is traditionally red in color, so it looks like blood. What makes the magical what makes it magical is the oils and herbs used in the ink. Uh, dragon's blood ink is usually includes the herb dragon's blood. It is used in any spell or ritual to add power to the spell. The reason for this is that we think of dragons, we think of power and energy. Dove's blood uh, has herbs in it that will help with love, peace, and romance. Bat's blood ink is usually not used in Wiccan rites, but many pagans who work with negative energy will use it as it uses herbs that are associated with more negative energy works. Statues can be used to honor your deities. They can also be used as focus items for meditation and spell work. They do not have to look like any specific deity, but represent the energy of that deity. You can also use statues to represent the elements. They can be in place of candles as representation, or you can just simply use them as an extra energy boost with your other tools. The wand is an item that is usually made from natural items that is used to direct energy. Depending on what it is made of will explain what energy it is that you are directing. Usually this is associated with the element of air because you have to have knowledge and understanding of what you are using. Some paths, however, choose to associate the wand with the element of fire. Why? I'm not sure. Granted, when we imagine a magic wand, we usually associate sparks, but if that's why people are associating the wand with fire, I'm not sure. Now, with the wand, as well as with the athame, many people do not use either of these items, but choose to use their finger to direct energy. There are some people who like to use a wand over the athame, or have numerous different wands for different purposes. Some people prefer to use wooden wands, some like metal wands, and some like crystal ones, like the one I have pictured here. Now keep in mind the ones I have discussed are simply a few tools that people use. Also, some people may not use any of the items I've discussed. Tools are not the important part of what you have on your altar. There is one tool, however, that all witches must have. Imagination. So now you have learned about basic altars and tools that can be used on altars. Thank you for listening. Mary Part.